Hello, my friends. Here we are in our module about scheduled maintenance plant shutdown. This is a very important part of the maintenance activity, and sometimes it can be related to the type of production or industry in which we are, or also can be scheduled exclusively for the purposes of maintenance. So it is important. Sometimes it is a seasonal thing that means, uh, well, we run out of parts here, we run out of material, we run out of fruit, whatever, and then we, we have a seasonal convenience. The sugar industry is one of those. And uh, the other is convenience. We need to stop because it will be convenient to have our equipment in, best, in better shape. Nevertheless, here's a comment. Uh, when the bad crisis of uh, the 2009 that hasn't yet finished uh, came to the, to the plants of Toyota. Toyota, what they did, they stopped the plant and did a great maintenance program and not only that, but they trained their people very, very good. That's a good, good way to take advantage of those stoppages. Now, uh, we will, of course, in this uh, best maintenance practices, we will pay attention to our industry. It can be the sugar industry, the hotels. Oh yeah, hotels need to, to, to do repairs in, term, in times when the season is low, you know, when they don't have all the rooms uh, occupied. Uh, fruit processing is another. Uh, specialties packaging. I have a very important customer who packages uh, gifts or things specialized on the season. I'm <clears throat> saying that uh, we're going to pack for Christmas, for for Valentine's, for Mother's Day, etc. <clears throat> then we have uh, some industries <clears throat> that have stoppages every day, like the cheese industry, meat industry, and also. Uh, some, uh, for example, I, I have a customer in Mexico who does uh, uh, pineapple juice. Pineapple juice requires a total cleaning of the plant every single day. Now, actually, a setup or changeover is also a scheduled shutdown. We all know that. So, some shutdowns are total. <clears throat> that means the whole plant is out. Some others are just partial, just an area of our productive plant needs to stop. The others can keep running. So what is very important in all this to be successful is the plan. How we are going to do a good plan to take advantage of that stoppage. Here we go. Let us consider that you have yearly shutdowns. When should you start planning? You know what? The very next day after you finish your first your, your current stoppage, you say, okay, for next year we're going to start doing this. And you start listing those so you don't forget. So <clears throat> it is likely that your next, uh, your next shutdown will be more successful because you have been taking notes from the very beginning of the year, you know. So that is very critical that we all pay attention to it. And uh, as you move ahead with your plan, you will need to start considering in a timely manner all the resources you are going to need. You're going to need uh, time, of course, materials, uh, human resource, of course, and in many cases you will also require some outsourced services. And that is very common. Outsourced services are today one critical part of the maintenance activity. Now, Make sure that the right time or the time that you're proposing for your stoppage, if it is a, if it is a maintenance stoppage, make sure that that timing is good for everybody because everybody should be a participant in this plan. You want everybody to own the, plan, the maintenance plan. Now, sometimes you will also need some participation on the part of the suppliers. Some of your vendors of parts and all that can be very, very convenient to have them participate. In some cases, we, in, we have uh, created arrangements with them to do some consignation of parts 
just in case I need them, I get an allotment of parts that at the end of the stoppage will be counted and then they will invoice me for the parts that I consumed in my stoppage. How about that? I did this many times. I have done it many times. Actually, I had a, a, a salesman from Mushroom Industries uh, some years ago that came to my plant with his coveralls and went through the jobs and helped us with his hands on in the process of repairs and the maintenance. That was really good. So consider that everybody, everybody feels the, the need and the convenience to participate and to be a part of your success. Now, use your imagination and your creativity and also the creativity and imagination of your team. All your people can come up with good stuff. Now, you are going to select the jobs by their criticality. The most critical will be taken care of first, okay? Then <clears throat> allocate a generous allotment of time for each job. If, uh, if we finish first, no problem. Now, list your critical components always. Make sure uh, so, some parts you need to order with several months or, or weeks in advance. Well, make sure that you order those parts in a timely manner so that by the time of the stoppage, you have them all, okay? Now, talk to, <clears throat> To your, to your, uh, as I said, to your uh, suppliers about those components, those common components, so you have plenty of them. And uh, one important thing now: create your critical route with a with a common Excel uh, worksheet. You can definitely list the jobs that you have, and then define exactly in which day you are going to start. There are some industries that require even more precision. Sometimes you will have to, to say, we are going to start this job this day at 7 a.m. and we will be done at 11.34. And that uh, criticality of the times can depend on the industry. For example, in energy services, it, it is critical to have those times that clear cut. It's very important. So be careful with that. <clears throat> now. Uh, in addition to your main program with all the, those jobs that are really critical and super important, you should have another little list of other jobs that are not that critical, but that you would like to take care of them if you have the time. That helps you very good when a job ends a little faster than expected then you say, well, this job we had expected to last for three days and uh, now it's only two days and three hours and uh, we have still five hours to work on something else. Well, that is when you can have your extra jobs, other smaller jobs that are also important. And also <clears throat> be prepared because in some cases, one of the, te the, the teams that are doing the work may realize that they are not going to be capable of finishing in the allotted time. So you can probably discover the need to reinforce those teams, okay? So be careful on that. That is the development of a correct stoppage, a correct shutdown, so that everybody is ready to help each other. Uh, you remember <clears throat> that at the beginning I told you that a setup is actually a scheduled shutdown. And that's true. I did that on purpose. Why? Because I would like you to imagine that SMER, the techniques for quick change over, for quick uh, change of dials, can be perfectly applied to any work that you are doing in your plan. And the, it's very simple. You separate your times and you say, okay, preparation is one critical, of course, you need to do all your preparation, then the execution, and then post restart. Meaning that in some cases, once you have everything that you will need for the job, the job starts, okay, and you use your time in doing whatever you are doing in your repair, and then you finish and you have the equipment ready to run, 
but you still will have time to remove from there packaging, spare parts that you will not need, spare parts that you that you change, etc. So you bring everything out of there, but the equipment is ready to run. Preparation for this, of course, for one of these shutdowns, will be much bigger. That's pretty obvious. But also, your results are going to be more noticeable, and the effectiveness of the maintenance activity will produce much more uptime, reliability, and cost effectiveness. And that's what we all are looking for. Now, make sure that you keep a very careful record of all the activities in your shutdown, because that will help you big time for the next opportunity. And uh, remember that learning is always a very valuable activity, okay? So make sure that you register everything that was done in your, in your, ch in your uh, shutdown. Now, this is a beautiful opportunity for us to delegate and empower our people. Make sure that this, you take advantage of this opportunity because all your people are sharing this big project so they can support each other and you can be supporting them and everybody is going to evolve in a very, very good manner. I am very thankful, very thankful for you to be with this. Now, make sure that you finish your, your, your shutdown Prepare a good report, okay? Great report, please. A report that details everything that was done with clear explanation of what was done, why was it done, what was the cost of doing it, you know, and how much effort it required. But the most important comes here. What are the savings and the benefits by, for, for having done that? because this is going to be a, a benefit for the company. Measure it in dollars or whatever is your currency. Measure it clearly because this is when everybody, even people who are not related to maintenance, will understand the benefits of this shutdown and your preparation. I thank you so much for all the emails that are arriving constantly to my mailbox. This uh, process was precisely a suggestion of one of our uh, viewers, and I thank you very much for that. Keep asking for some things that you feel can be of value to you. I will be tremendously happy to comply with your requests. Thank you so much, and if you want to keep watching our videos as soon as they come out, Please press the button up here that says subscribe. Subscribe and we will let you know every time that you put up a new video. Thank you so much.